Or one, this part of the video uh, will will go over information about trees and forests, and hopefully you can use some of this information when you go to draw your poster. So let's start with um, uh, sort of what a tree is. Uh, do you, can you name all of the parts of the tree? Now I'm also going to be adding uh, the some of the information I that they gave me that I am sort of um, compiling for you. I'm also going to give you um, um, access to that uh, in, in this assignment. But right now, let's sort of talk about the different uh, parts of a tree. Part number one, it's going to be at the very tip top, we call that the crown. Part number two, that's going to be the trunk of the tree. And underground, we have part three, and that's going to be the roots. I think everybody would have probably have guessed all of those except for the crown. I, I didn't realize the leafy uh, top uh, portion of the tree is called the crown. Now, if we uh, cut the tree in half and look to the cross section of the tree, uh, would you be able to name the parts there? Sort of like on the inside. Uh, the outside covering of the tree that protects it from uh, harsh winters, uh, hot summers, uh, and rain and all the weather, that's called the bark. The inside is called the xylem. Now the xylem acts as a transportation system that transports nutrients from the roots up to the leaves and from the leaves down to the roots. Uh, so it, it, it collects uh, energy and changes that into nutrients and food called photosynthesis from the leaves. And then it also with uh, the rain and the nutrients in the soil, uh, the roots take that in and they sort of share that amongst the tree as it grows. Speaking of growth, the cambium is the outer layer underneath the bark <clears throat> that is, this is the part of the tree that actually grows. So each year, a tree goes through what we call the dormant stage. The dormant stage is when uh, it, cool weather hits. This usually occurs in the fall. The uh, tree stops making chlorophyll, which makes the leaves green. And there, that's how we uh, start to see the uh, leaves changing colors. And then when they fall. And so... Uh, when this occurs, the tree just goes in what we call that dormant stage where it just sort of sleeps. It's not dead, it just sort of hibernates. And then in the spring, uh, when the warmer weather comes out, the tree wakes back up and it starts to grow. Every time it does that, it creates what we call a ring. That's that cambium layer. And then the center part of the uh, centermost part of the tree is called the heartwood. And this is the part that where it's the, the xylem that has, um, has thickened up so much that it doesn't transport anything anymore, but it's more acts, uh, it acts more as a uh, support system. So we mentioned the rings. Uh, so if you cut a tree in half and look at the cross section, you're going to see all of those rings. So now we know how those rings were, uh, were created. It's uh, where the, the cambium uh, actually grows each year. And then it goes to that dormant state in the winter, and then it creates a new ring in the spring. And so if you think about how much history a, a tree may have seen over a course of its lifetime. And so they have a nice diagram that shows that, you know, at the very center of the tree, uh, you know, when the tree was a small seedling, uh, it may have seen the, the pilgrims come over on the Mayflower. And then over the years, it might have seen the signing of the Declaration of Independence. George Washington could have became the first president. They could have seen Kentucky become the 15th uh, state um, of the United States. It could have seen Lewis and Clark uh, exploring Kentucky as it was uh, going through and trying to, uh, to explore North America. Uh, it might have seen Abraham Lincoln become the 16th president. It could have seen uh, the opening of uh, UK uh, College in Lexington. It could have seen the first Kentucky Derby at Churchill Downs. Or the, this uh, uh, poster contest um, has, was actually began in 1944. Uh, and it could have even seen um, in 1960 Hawaii becomes the 50th state. Or it could have even seen us uh, doing virtual learning as, um, as Kentucky deals with the uh, COVID crisis. So a tree can see a lot of history over its course of its lifetime. So if you're going to be drawing a tree or a forest, consider a forest um, more than just being a bunch of trees. It is, a, a, you know, think of it as a complex communities that support a rich variety of plants and animals and over um, 750 animal species of animals consider the forest their home. Uh, 1,800 different kinds of plants call the forest their home.
Now, uh, if, uh, another little fun fact for you, uh, about 47%, that's almost half uh, of Kentucky, is covered in trees. And so I thought that was a really neat uh, fun fact. Now, if we look at the trees down at the bottom, uh, I want to go over some of the different layers of a forest. So the very tip top layer where you have all these uh, really extremely tall tips of the trees that shoot out above the rest, that's called the emergent layer. Now, in the, in, underneath the emergent layer, we have what we call the canopy. The canopy is where all the leaves and the branches grow so thick that it sort of shades the forest floor from the sun. Then you have the, um, the middle layer, which is called the understory. The understory is where many of our animals are going to uh, consider making, their, making this place their home. And then at the very, very bottom, you have the forest floor. So if we look at a cross-section of this, we have the emergent layer, which is the uh, tips of the trees that grow super, super tall above the canopy. Then the canopy is where all the thick leaves and branches are. The understory is where you're going to find most of your animals. And then you have the forest floor where you have lots of plants. Uh, and you've got many animals that live uh, in, the, in and on uh, the forest floor. So looking at it from, um, uh, uh, from, from down below looking up, we could see the uh, canopy where it's shading the sky and the sunlight. It's where those leaves and trees are so thick. And uh, the canopy is also a good place where uh, uh, nuts and seeds will grow. Uh, and it's going to be food for birds and uh, lots of animals, like squirrels. And so the understory is made up of all the, the small trees pushing up toward the light. And this is, uh, again, it has a lot of population of animals and birds uh, that will be in this uh, area. And I found this really cool image from the United States Postal Service, believe it or not, that showed an artist who did a painting that shows the uh, Kentucky's forest and all of the animals that, that call this place their home. Everything from uh, beavers building a dam using the limbs of trees to hawks and owls to bears and deer, uh, butterflies, uh, moths, you have weasels, you have quail which build their nest on the ground. Uh, we have berries and mushrooms, you've got chipmunks and squirrels, even a wild turkey. Everybody's going to be thinking about turkey uh, for the month of November. Now, the, uh, the, the uh, forest floor uh, is going to be the home of many plants uh, and um, uh, ferns, and we think about all of the uh, uh, animals that consider this place their home, like uh, snakes and toads and frogs and mice and rabbits, and uh, we can go on and on and on. As the uh, trees over time, and of course, you know, you have the leaves that fall in the fall and trees that uh, may, uh, you know, are so old that they, they do fall over. Well, all of that stuff uh, uh, breaks down uh, and ants and millipedes and centipedes and earthworms, they help with uh, breaking this material down, which gives uh, the soil more nutrients to grow more plants, which feeds animals and uh, provides homes for some of these uh, wildlife animals. If I was drawing a poster about Kentucky's trees, uh, you might look at this logo from the Kentucky Division of Forestry. Now, the leaf inside of it is uh, from our state tree called the Tulip Popular. So, again, if you wanted to uh, do a poster contest about state trees or the trees in our state, I just wanted you to see that logo. And if you wanted to incorporate that some way in your poster, I think that is a really good uh, idea. Think about all of the jobs uh, that, that your parents uh, or, or family or uh, people that you know, uh, they, they depend on trees for their jobs. Loggers come in and will cut out uh, um, and thin out forests or they'll cut down the trees. And then you have truck drivers who uh, take the logs to uh, different places. They take them to factories or uh, sawmills that uh, take that. Uh, log and change it into boards like two by fours and plywood and then that uh, gives contractors and uh, uh, carpenters uh, things to build uh, homes and houses with. Uh, they uh, Truck drivers could also take the logs to paper mills and where they can actually make paper. So you are actually uh, drawing um, uh, on, on, if you're drawing tree, a picture about trees on paper which actually comes from trees. I thought that was sort of a neat uh, connection. Uh, 
And then you have people uh, like this young lady who is uh, uh, planting trees. So loggers can't just come in and just cut down all the trees because they're going to run out of job if they do. Uh, and, or they're, you know, they're not going to have anything else to cut. So they have to go back and replenish the forest and, and, and replace the things that they take from the forest. And so they go back and replant trees. Uh, think about our school. Our school is named Lone Oak Elementary School. And this year, it's uh, the theme is Exploring Kentucky's Mighty Oaks. And I thought, you know, this would be a good way to tie our school connection to a poster contest. You know, uh, we have little acorns. If you want to draw acorns, if you want to draw uh, oak leaves, this would be an excellent idea for this contest. Uh, and like I said earlier, uh, uh, they really are, I think, putting a little more emphasis on uh, oak trees this year. And they gave us a, a good image of a mighty burr oak which is one of the largest oaks that I can think of. Uh, and it, you can see how huge it is. And they give us some examples of it. Look, uh, what it looks like in different seasons. Here's the fall. It has uh, leaves in the summer. So it looks like actually in the summer. They also sort of focus on the seeds uh, and the acorns that this uh, tree produces and what some of the bark looks like. Think about all of the things that we do and use uh, all of these different products actually come from uh, trees or ingredients that come from trees, like uh, toothpaste. Uh, if, you know, when I thought about toothpaste, I don't brush my teeth with trees, but the uh, peppermint and spearmint flavoring uh, from the toothpaste uh, comes from uh, uh, trees and evergreens. Uh, you have uh, sodas that are are are. Also, if you read the ingredients, it's made of citrus. Citrus is going to be your lemons, your limes, your oranges. Um, and those are all come from trees. Those are all are fruit. You know, if you think about all the fruit trees that we have and all the food that we eat uh, that come from trees, you know, apples and bananas. I know uh, Kentucky's not known for the banana trees, but we do have apples and peaches um, uh, and uh, oranges uh, uh, close by. Think about uh, your chocolate chip cookie, the chocolate uh, for your hot chocolate or your, your chips. Uh, that comes from a cocoa bean, which also grows off a tree. Uh, your parents who drink coffee, or grandparents who drink coffee, also uh, coffee beans grow off of trees. Uh, glue, uh, I think of uh, the tree sap. If you drill a hole in certain trees, it's going to have this uh, thick, uh, uh, it's a liquid, but it's sort of thick, uh, sticky substance. Uh, some of the, the ingredients that, that makes that sap uh, also goes into making glues, cellophane tape, bubble gum. Uh, you know, think about uh, some of the ingredients from trees that they use to make uh, dish soap, uh, medicine. Uh, they use uh, an ingredient from trees to help bind uh, some of the mes medicine, uh, lotion, and crayons. Uh, carnauba is a type of wax that uh, comes from trees and, and, and also on their leaves. And so I thought it's another uh, good connection that we're not only using, uh, we're drawing a poster about trees on paper, which comes from trees, but you're also using a pencil that is made from wood uh, that comes from trees. And now we're thinking about crayons that comes from um, a, a, a type of wax called carnauba wax which is on some types of leaves on some trees. And we have uh, tissues that we blow our nose on. you got a cinnamon stick. Those are all uh, also ingredients that uh, originate from trees. Smokey the Bear is an excellent uh, character if you want to draw uh, Smokey and, um, and try to help prevent forest fires. He's been around uh, since 1944. Uh, and he's also, um, well, I thought it was a fun fact that uh, he's based off of a real bear, that uh, black bear that survived the um, really uh, horrific uh, uh, forest fire way back in the, in the 1940s. Uh, so, uh, but he's been around for a long time and hopefully he'll be around for, uh, uh, you know, for many more and more years. And again, trying to help educate people uh, to make sure they put out their campfires. Don't throw cigarettes uh, out the windows they're driving. Uh, make sure that you know you burn your leaves very carefully uh, so that we can help prevent forest fires. Uh, Arbor Day. Arbor Day is set a, a, in Kentucky. It's the first Friday in April and it's a day set aside where everybody's encouraged to go out and plant trees. 
And so you can look at this image of Linus and Lucy. However, I wouldn't draw this exact uh, image because uh, Linus and Lucy is drawn by Charles Schultz, who um, uh, his uh, artwork is uh, you know well known and is copyrighted. And so we can't use li the images of Linus and Lucy, but you could draw you and your family uh, planting a tree. That would be a good image. And again, uh, our state tree is the tulip poplar tree, and this is what the oak leaves look like. They have uh, uh, anywhere from four to six little points. Uh, they're sort of thick and, and uh, wide. Uh, they have uh, these white blossoms, uh, and this is what the seeds and a little seedling, or seed pod and a little seedling looks like. Now, it says the two po it's a tulip popular, but it's not in the popular family. It's actually sort of in the magnolia family. There, uh, the uh, just throwing this out, uh, good information. The uh, forestry uh, department is always looking to uh, break a record, and so if you have a really, really huge tree on your property, or know a farm, or a, or a park, or you just know there's a large tree somewhere, go out and measure it, and send the measurements to the um, uh, the information here is the. Uh, the Kentucky Forestry Department, I believe, and uh, who knows, you might have, uh, you might break the record. And I think the uh, the largest tree in Kentucky, it's a it's a huge oak, and I, I believe it's in Montgomery uh, County. Uh, I think it's more eastern Kentucky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with some images of uh, forest of Kentucky. Uh, and I'm hoping this encourages you, I hope it inspires you to do your very best uh, and draw uh, from, from uh, the information I've given you. I also want to review some of the animals that call the forest their home. Uh, rabbits, you have deer, you have fox, uh, raccoons. I love this image of the sunlight beaming through um, uh, the leaves. Uh, we already mentioned rabbits. Um, cute little things. Uh, think about horseback riding through the forest. What a great way to spend a, an afternoon. Think about all of the birds that consider uh, the forest and the tree branches their homes, uh, whether they live in a tree like woodpeckers and owls, or, uh, or those are called cavity nesters, or if they uh, build their nest um, using the, the twigs and sticks or in, their, in the tree branches. Think about other animals that, that live in Kentucky's forest. You have, uh, we have uh, gray uh, or red wolves. We have uh, possums and got butterflies, uh, tree frogs, toads. Um, all of those would be uh, excellent animals if you want to draw along with trees. Uh, beavers make, uh, you know, those are the carpenters of the animal family, uh, and they build their homes out of logs. You know, they cut down the trees and limbs themselves to build their homes which uh, sometimes uh, backs up the water. Uh, but, you know, think also about squirrels. Uh, my trees are filled with squirrels, and they're eating all of my pecans before I'm able to get out there and pick them. So I'm going to leave, leave you with this image. It's from uh, Scholastic uh, Books, uh, and an artist uh, sort of depicts uh, all of the animals in the forest. Um, I think all of these animals actually live in Kentucky except for the badger. We don't, I don't think we have any badgers. But uh, this is an, a, a good image, uh, again, trying to promote uh, the healthy uh, forest, uh, a positive um, a spin on this, and, uh, you know, and trying to keep the environment clean. So I'm hoping that I inspired you, but please make sure that exploring Kentucky's Mighty Oaks is somewhere on the front cover. You write your name and your teacher's name on the back. Uh, that will help me and return it to your teacher's. Uh, through your folders uh, in the flash files and if you can get them to me before November 20th that would be awesome because that's when we'll start the judging process so have fun with this uh, be creative keep in mind I have paper for you in the Friday uh, in the um, flash files it's the filing cabinet on the right and it's in the drawer and on the very bottom so bottom right of the filing cabinets. So again, enjoy, have fun with this, and uh, I wish you the very best.